Hi folks, just driving home and look what we've got discarded on the side of the road in this little bit of scrub here. Someone's just dumped this lawnmower in the middle of nowhere on the side of the road. Let's jump out, let's have a look at it and let's see if it's worthwhile chucking in the back of the car and taking home. So let's have a closer look at this thing. You know, you can see she's a little bit dirty. It's obviously a Rover. It's got the catcher and everything there. She's got a classic Briggs and Stratton four stroke engine. What's really nice, you can actually see it's got one of the wider decks on it. Good solid, you know, 21 inches. You can see, obviously, the handles falling out there. Looks like it's missing the throttle. But you know what, it's probably not much wrong with it. So, look, there's gonna be a few good spare parts. And as you can see, it's actually the wider body 21 or 22 inch so you know even if we can't get the engine running she's a good solid body on it so let's get it loaded up get it into the car get it home and let's see if we can fix it up so there you go folks it was a little bit of a struggle but we've got this rover with the classic Briggs and Stratton loaded into the back of the vehicle here it's a nice wide body lawnmower actually so really hoping that we can get it going with a minimum amount of ease but it just goes to show the waste of some people people really don't seem to care nowadays and just see look it was just dumped in this beautiful bit of nature here i'm just so surprised that people they'd rather just go and buy some sort of imported junk rather than fix up something like this which would actually last probably another 10 20 years with proper maintenance so you know let's get it home stop talking let's see if we can get it started let's see if we can fix it up hi there and welcome back to the channel today i'm here with this rover lawnmower which as you saw in the beginning i picked up off the side of the road, it was actually a couple of days ago now, someone had just dumped this Rover lawnmower on the side of the road in amongst the uh, scrublands there. Now, as I was unloading the lawnmower out of the car, I noticed that there's something going on here also with the height adjustment. Obviously, we pointed out in the video, I think that the throttle cable seems to be busted. As you can see, that's just hanging off there. And who knows what else is wrong with this lawnmower, but as I also pointed out, it's a wide body deck, look, and it looks in reasonable condition. It's not rusted out majorly or anything. So let's have a closer look at this. Before I do anything, let's actually start by seeing if we can actually get this Briggs and Stratton four stroke engine to run. So we'll have a look at the condition of the fuel, throw some fuel in it, give the handle a pull, and let's just see what it actually does so we can actually decide, are we gonna part this out or are we actually gonna try and fix this up and save this little mop? So let's get into it. So before we do anything, we should actually check if it's even got oil in the engine. So just undo this little dipstick. It's a four stroke Briggs and Stratton classic engine. Now, you can see there's hardly anything in there. So let's grab some oil and top that off. It's really unknown condition, but let's throw some oil in there to start with anyway. So I've just got some four stroke, 30 weight, small engine oil here to put in this. And we'll just put enough in so that we can actually just see if it actually even runs. Just so it's got a decent amount on that dipstick. Let's have a look there. All right, so we can see that's just come up on the minimum amount on the dipstick, so good enough to see if she'll actually even run. So given we've got oil in the engine, let's check the fuel. So you can see it's pretty dry. There's not much in there, but it doesn't spell bad. So let's just top that up with some fresh fuel and let's just pull the handle and see what happens. All right, so that should be enough to get it going, if it's gonna run, of course. So, put that cap on. So, as we know, the throttle cable on the top there is busted, so, but just looking around at these Briggs, I'm pretty sure from memory that the off is fully across like that on the carburetor, and the sort of on is around here. In actual fact, given this is busted, let's just see if we can get what's remaining of this throttle cable out of the way completely. There we go. So 
So get rid of that. And let's just set the throttle, something like that. Give it a few primes. Oh yeah, you can feel it's doing something. So let's give it say three primes and we'll pull that handle. Well, she at least wants to run. So I don't know, let's give it another prime and see if she'll go. Oh, that's interesting. Let's just give it a little bit more throttle and see what happens. Okay. Maybe another prime. So, as you can see there, <laughs> she's, um, that's the muffler. So, it clearly wanted to run but it's blown that muffler straight off the side. So, well, obviously it conged out, fortunately, anyway. Um, let's have a look to see what we've got lying around the place in terms of a muffler. I think the fact that that actually started, all being it didn't actually keep running, shows that we've got a pretty good strong spark and compression. It's probably just got some cleaning to do on the carburetor, but let's see if we can sort the muffler and keep going from there. All right, so as you can see, she's just blown that muffler straight off the side. Let's see if we can get these moldy crypts onto what's left and see if we can actually unscrew what's left there. Oh, that's, that's moving straight away. So let's just get in on that. I actually thought that might have been harder to screw the remains out there, but that looks like it's coming quite easily, which is good. Get that off. There we go, that's come out. Now let's go have a bit of a rustle around and see what we've got. So rummaging through my mow of bits and pieces, I found this muffler, which actually came from a subscriber who dropped off a box of bits and pieces the other week. Thank you, you know who you are. Now, this muffler is absolutely perfect and it will screw in. So we'll get that mounted up, just like that, and we'll give it another start. We'll see how she actually runs. Funnily enough, I reckon that new muffler is probably at this stage the best part about this mould, but let's give it a few primes now. I'll give it, say, you know, a couple of primes. We've got that throttle roughly in the mid position. Let's give her another full. So as you can see, the engine really does want to run. However, clearly there's an issue with it surging. Now I'm gonna say that's probably a governor spring problem or a general carburetor problem. But before we do anything else, let's give this mower a solid degreasing, pressure wash. So they're actually working with a clean exterior to the mower, so they're not gonna contaminate anything. And I actually like working on clean moles. So now that we've got a clean mower to work with, let's get the top of this air filter off and actually have a look what's going on with this carburetor. So straight away you can see that that air filter is actually really clogged up. So that would have been really restricting the airflow. So we'll probably give this one a clean or we'll throw a new air filter on. But for now, why don't we just pop that screw back in like that and we'll see if it starts up without the air filter on at all because it's a fairly clean environment in here 
Now, sometimes these mowers won't actually run without that screw in. That's why I've put that in there like that. So let's give it a pull, see what happens. As you can see, that was clearly surging there. And to me, it looks like, I showed you those springs that are working with the governor. It looks like this little spring here that comes off of the governor simply has not got enough tension on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tighten that spring a fraction and then we'll restart it. So let's restart it and see what happens. So clearly that surging then was better at idle. However, as you saw, when I increased the RPM up to the operating RPM, it was surging all over the place again. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna pop the top cover off, which has got the starter mechanism. We'll just check the complete mechanism of that governing uh, spring there that blows out um, and governs the speed of the engine. And we'll just check that everything else is actually looking normal. So let's get this top cover off there should be just three i think they're 10 mil bolts to take out one around the front one on the back side here and then one around the other side and then that should just lift straight off okay get that to one side let's have a look in here so you can see this flap there looks fine. I kind of thought that there may be some extra muck caught under here, but that all looks fairly normal. However, something that I am noticing, I'll just bring you in. It looks like the O-ring that seals to go onto the carburetor into the engine isn't quite fitted correctly. Let's, I'll show you. So just bringing you in here, we can see there's that plastic retainer, which is just flapping around. And then back in here, we can see that O-ring is just sticking out in there. So I think somebody's actually been in here. And something else I've noticed is there's actually a bolt missing that should be holding that fuel tank up. Now I haven't taken that off that I recall. So I think somebody's had this apart and they haven't actually put this back together correctly. That's the joys, I suppose, when you pick up something off the side of the road. You really don't know the history. Let's get that all off and see if we can get that fitted up correctly. So let's get in here. I've got a half inch socket on there. Let's get that main nut out there that holds the fuel tank. No, it doesn't want to come out by hand. So let's get that on there like that. Let's see. Okay, so we can get that out. Get that out the way. Okay, now we can see quite clearly that O-ring wasn't actually inserted correctly. So, let's just see if we can manipulate the carburetor and fuel tank off. So, 
let's have a look at this. I think this O-ring should actually sit right in there like that. And then this other plastic piece, I'm gonna assume it actually just sits in as a, as a retainer, clicks in like that. And then that whole carburetor assembly and fuel tank should slide on to that intake pipe. Let's do that now. So to make that slide back on a little bit easier, just get a bit of silicon spray on that shaft. And let's try and reinstall this carburetor fuel tank assembly. So to start with, let's get that rod reattached for the fuel linkage to the governor. And then let's get this fuel tank on. There we go. Now that has slid on really nicely. And we can see that front bolt hole actually aligns now. So let's get this bracket back in place. In here. Must have that down up the wrong way. Must go like this. So turn that over. And get that re installed. This little breather needs to go on in here. Just like that. So folks, if you've watched some of my videos in the past, you might know I've got this junk mower down here with this Briggs and Stratton engine. It's the same type of engine. So let's just steal the bolt here from this mower that holds the fuel tank on and we'll throw that onto the other mower. So let's pop our freshly salvaged bolt onto this fuel tank bracket here. So the next thing to do will be to put the top cover with the pull start mechanism back on. However, since we've got it off, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lubricate the uh, spring. I've got my inox here. That's the best thing. So you just wanna find just where the spring's poking out just spray that in. And then we'll let that go. We'll pull it a few times, just to work that in. Might pull it halfway this time and put some more in. There you go. You can see the spring there, so we'll just put a little bit more in. And just work that into the spring. So let's pop that top cover back on now. So simply a matter of sliding it over and putting it to the right spot. There we go. Now lift this bracket up and get this back bolt started there. So with that carburetor now attached properly and the top cover back on, let's give it a test start. So there you go folks, it appears like we've addressed the actual running side of the engine. So now what we need to do is we need to find a throttle cable for this mower and we also need to address the issue with, as you can see, the deck adjustment which we talked about in the beginning of the video. So looking at our junk mowers down here by the fence, this one here looks to have a, a reasonable throttle cable and it's also got the bolt and knob there um, which we can grab because our other one's missing. So let's get it off now. So looking at this, unfortunately this throttle cable is not going to be long enough. So let's see what else we've got lying around the place. So as you can see, I've gone and grabbed the original longer cable that actually came with this mold, but it was missing the throttle control handle. Let's see if we can get this recycled throttle control handle off of the shorter 
got a uh, cable and onto the original longer one and see if we can get that working as a combination. So let's get that completely undone there. And I'm gonna assume this should just pull apart. So let's grab a screwdriver. There we go, let's click that apart. And then let's get the original cable in like that. We just need to get that little piece slotted in the correct position. And put them back together. Straight away, we've got a working cable. So let's start by attaching the end at the carburetor of the throttle cable and bring it up here. So funnily enough, looking at the length of this one, this is actually too long to bring it up on this side. However, if we cross it over and attach it on this side, that length will be fine. So let's do that. And whilst we're here, let's pop on that bolt and the knob from that other mower onto the handlebars. Just because this has been annoying me actually, um, trying to work on it with the handlebars flopping around. Probably should have done this earlier, but such is life. There you go, it's starting to feel quite firm. So now what we need to do is grab a couple of cable ties. I'll just fit these loosely for now so that we can make some adjustments. So I'll put one there, and we'll put one about there. And then what we need to do, just need to pop that cable in under that little clamp. Might have to take that off completely. Yeah, just like that. And slide that in. Now, importantly, we need to get the adjustment correct. So we just need to add a cable tie in around the carburetor here, just like this. And what that does, that allows the throttle position on the actual engine to come all the way around, so it actually switches off. So let's test our throttle cable. And as you can see, that's working absolutely perfectly. When it's off, it's coming all the way around, so the engine will switch off. And so that's good to go. So what we can do now, is we can just Tighten up these cable ties, which we had on loose. Put that one in there. And just check this is completely tight in here. Perfect. And then we can cut the excess off our cable ties. So given that we've got the carburetor and the throttle cable all sorted, let's pop in a new air filter whilst we're here. So that goes around like that and pop on the top of the housing like that, put that screw through. And let's give it a test start. Give it a couple of primes. got that all sorted so let's move on to fixing the height adjustment so clearly when i look at what's going on here with the height adjustment we've got this bar which connects the front to the rear and you can see here that that's just flapping around the place for some reason that pin that's meant to be connecting that bar back down onto the rear axle here is just missing so let's get a block of wood under the rear of the mower let's get this back wheel off and let's see if we can find a pin off one of our junk mowers and down the side of the fence okay so after looking at the junk mowers down on the side of the 
vent. It appears that all of the pins are pressed into that bar on the ones I've got. So I've just been rummaging around the shed because I really want to get this mower fixed up today. I've just got this little stainless steel bolt, which I think will actually do the trick. So we're just going to use that. Let's lower the height there. And the nice thing about this is I actually have some lock nuts that go with those little stainless steel bolts. So that's gonna stop from coming off in the future. So we'll just get the impact onto that. So then straight away, let's test to see how this is actually going to work. So that to me, looks like that's gonna do the trick perfectly. So let's get that rear wheel back on and do a true test. Yep, and it's got clearance, so that's perfect. Get these washers back on in there. And then let's get that hubcap back on. So now that we've fixed that height adjustment, let's just adjust that. You can see that's working perfectly well now. And it's still rolling freely. So we're done there. So now that we've fixed everything that's broken on this mower, let's start by doing some basic maintenance. We'll check the condition of the blade, but before we turn it over, just gonna undo the spark plug because we are gonna be turning the blade and we don't wanna risk the engine starting when we've got the mower over. So you notice that we turn the mower always with a four stroke. So the carburetor and the air filter is up and the exhaust muffler is down. So clearly looking at this blade, it has been a while since it's been sharpened. So we'll give that a bit of a sharpen, but. One thing we'll also check is that it's not bent. Now you can see that blade is in pretty good condition. So we might take that blade off, we'll check the balance and we'll actually sharpen it. So let's get a socket onto that nut there. I'd say it's been a while since this blade's been taken off this mole. Now the simple way that we check the balance of one of these blades is we simply use a screwdriver. And we can just hold that in there like that. And then we just see, you can see this one's not bad actually. It's a little bit heavier on this side. So when we sharpen the blades, we can deliberately just take a little bit more material off of this side and that'll balance it up. But we'll check the balance after we've sharpened the blade. So as you can see, we've ground a nice sharp edge on both ends of the blade. And importantly, as I've done this, I've checked the balance and I just took a little bit extra off this end so that it would balance perfectly. I'll just show you how the balance is at now. As you can see, that is perfect. So now that we've sharpened the blade, let's reinstall the blade. There we go. So now that we've got a good working mower, let's drain what engine oil is actually in the mower. As you know, we've got no idea of the history. It was low on oil and we had to top it up, but let's drain what was in there. Now, you should run your mower, get it warm. As you've seen, I've been running it several times today, so I've already got the engine warm enough for the purposes of what we're doing here. So let's get that oil out. As you can see here, just to get the final drops of oil out of the engine, I've just propped up, a bit of experiment, trial and error, those two wheels, got a block of wood in the mallet there, but I just adjusted the height until I was just getting the last few drops, and you can see it's just finishing draining now. So with that drain, let's flip it back up onto the wheels. Careful not to make a mess. 
out of interest, let's just tip this old engine oil into this old water bottle here. And let's just measure how much oil's actually come out of this engine. As you can see, not a lot of engine oil's actually come out. Now, this is a 500 mil bottle, and I'd say there's literally, you know, only a couple hundred mil of oil, if we're lucky. Now this Briggs & Stratton engine should be running with half a litre of oil, I would have thought. So we'll uh, top it up with good quality 30 weight oil, and we'll bring it up to the full line on the dipstick anyway. Look at that, it's pretty ordinary looking oil as well. So let's fill it up with this good quality four stroke 30 weight engine oil for small engines. Let's just stop and check the dipstick. Yep, we'll keep going. So I put about 600 mil of oil in and you can see it's just come up to the full mark. So that is perfect. It was very, very low on oil. Considering that I actually topped it up with a little bit of oil when we actually uh, got it as you saw in the beginning of the video. So when I pressure washed the mower earlier, a number of the stickers blasted off. But this classic 37 blasted off but stayed intact. So let's see if we can actually super glue that back on. So we've actually got our classic 37. So the final thing I like to do is to rejuvenate all of the plastics with a bit of WD-40. So there you go, folks, that's how it's looking. I'll throw in a before shot from when I picked it up, but you can see it's come up a real treat, this Rover wide deck mower. So there you go, folks, we saved that this Rover Classic lawn mower, which has been left dumped on the side of the road to go to rot. What amazes me is this mower actually had a number of problems with it. Whether someone was using it and it was slowly breaking and they were putting up with it, or whether they tried to fix it and then part it out themselves, I really don't know. But if you've liked this video, do hit a like button. We really do appreciate it. And comment below. On the channel, you will find fixing and repairing and servicing a number of different vehicles. We've got the Mercedes, the Audi, the Mazda 3, the early Ford Falcon. And we also do a number of general DIY around the home. So if you're interested in any of that content, please do subscribe. But until next time, have a good evening.